Radio Ampliant, welcome to CTO Breakfast. I'm going to take you through the next episode of the evolution of CMS, Monolith to Mac. If you remember, in the last episode, we went through the origin story. Like great superhero tales, you start at the origin. In that episode, we went through the explosion of online and how brands needed better tooling for managing their experiences online and how developers were really suffering because they had to hand crank these websites with hundreds and thousands of pages with very minimal tooling. And that was the birth of CMS, the ability for brands to take control of their website and their online experience, and for developers to have the right tools to build things much more quickly than they could do. In this episode, we'll take you through the high-level architecture that supported the past and the traditional web CMSs, and something around the data model, a little bit more on the technical side, uh, but I'll, I'll try and make it easy to understand where I can. I'll be introducing some terms, and I'll try and explain those terms fairly quickly, but hopefully you can get what I'm talking about. Before we get into the whiteboarding and going through the components of CMS, let's talk about some of the foundational pieces in the architecture. First of all, CMS and systems in the past were built on premise. It meant that you were responsible for the infrastructure. You were responsible for the servers, the wires, the connectivity, the data center, whether that was in your office under your desk, or whether that was in a fully fledged data center that you were managing, or whether it was a third party data center. You were responsible for the infrastructure. You had to deal with servers going out, swapping them out, planning the scalability of the servers and the data centers. So that was the first part of it. The second principle was entire architecture. This actually just meant not putting everything on one giant box. It meant separating out the physical infrastructure into different layers. So your database would go into one layer, your business functionality and your business applications would go into a different layer, and your presentation would go into, a, into its own layer on the top. This was actually just good practice if you had an on-prem implementation and helped to allow you to scale different parts of the system. And the third one is the monolith. I mean, why wouldn't you want a monolith? They sound big, they sound heavy, they sound robust. Well, no one in software engineering actually wants a monolith. A monolith in software engineering is where all of the pieces, all of the components, all of the areas of code become fused together. So your data, your business application, and your user interfaces all become kind of fused together in one giant lump. I mean, they are separated out in the end-tier architecture, so physically they're separated out, but as you start developing on the platform, developers will pull these pieces together and they become fused because you're trying to build an application for your business. But even without that, systems are built with interconnectivity, so particularly on the old CMS where you'll have your web pages are dependent on your data model in the database, which we'll go through in a minute. Ultimately, you end up with this giant monolithic architecture. But why is that bad? I mean, well, first of all, scale can be quite hard. Uh, if you can scale up the different levels, and I've done that before, uh, but things like the business area, that, that, there'll be different areas that are fused together. So maybe your search and your CMS and your e-commerce platform are kind of fused together, so which bits do you scale? And you scale up one bit and it affects the other bit. The second one, which is really annoying, is development becomes slower and slower and slower. You developers will pull all these pieces together, and each time you get on it, it becomes a little bit more flaky. And if you've had developers leave, you never know which bit of code is doing what. Like a giant piece of spaghetti, you pull the thread and you don't know where it's going to pull out, come out from. And then the third one is it's just like it just gets really difficult to test because they've become so interconnected, you never know what's going to happen when you make a change. And then even with deployment, that just gets more and more difficult because instead of deploying one little tiny area code, you end up having to release whole blocks of code that span across big parts of the system. So ultimately, the monolith, although it sounds really cool, it's not necessarily a good thing when it comes to building an application. And that was the way the old software was built. So let's get into a bit of detail. We'll start with the CMS data model. The database was the heart of any CMS, especially in the old legacy monolithic world, where 
what you had to do was build all of the entities that you wanted to use further up the stack into your database. So the site, the navigation, the menus, pages, the templates, and obviously the modules of content all had to be modeled inside the database itself. In reality, these entities were modeled as database tables and actually formed some very complicated data structures. And as so, they became much more of a black box because it was fairly proprietary because actually it was designed for the application itself. It was actually designed for the objects in the CMS application, which means it was very difficult and very tricky to actually do any development at the database level. And even if you did manage to do any customization at the database level, you would struggle when it came to an application upgrade because the customization would no longer be valid. Some of the web CMSs started to evolve abstraction layers, which allowed the developers access to a data model which they could extend. This made it much easier to develop and extend the CMS and give some great querying functionality to some of the objects back in the database. But with that became a lot more complexity in the data model and the overall architecture, meaning that it was much harder to scale and actually getting some really good performance out of it was quite tricky. So let's zoom into the actual high-level architecture. Well, first of all, as we said earlier, CMS was built on the old N-tier on-premise architecture. And as we said, the database is right at the heart of the CMS, so we'll start there with the data model. And to put content into the database, there was always a business UI that the business users could add content and com configure, organize pages, and do all the work they need to do to build a site. In the application tier, there was a runtime which formed the core of the CMS. SDKs and libraries provide a layer in which the developers could actually customize and build the actual CMS application. And all of that would then integrate directly into the database through its own internal API calls. In the presentation tier, developers would build custom logic for the presentation layer on top of libraries dedicated to driving customer experience. And then on top of that, you'd have your templates, which actually ended up delivering the HTML for the pages to the browsers. In some instances, there wasn't even a presentation layer, and the two layers, the application and the presentation layer, was merged with one layer of custom code and then templates, but really depending on the type of CMS you bought. In this diagram, it's really easy to see how the monolith forms with the interconnectivity of the database with the CMS components and how the developer fuses those components together while building the overall application. Although in a later episode, we'll go through a more detailed discussion about headless architecture, how does a headless CMS break the monolith? First of all, there's no head because the presentation layer has been completely removed. Second, the SDKs, the libraries, part of the runtime is replaced by an API, usually REST. This means that content is no longer sent as HTML with presentation logic. It's sent as a simple piece of JSON. And finally, the actual CMS objects are not hard-coded into a SQL database. They're put into a repository on which you can define what your content components are, what your content types are in an open and flexible model. Wow, we went through a lot there. Went through the entire web CMS architecture, how old systems were built, went through monoliths, data models, and even discussed the difference between sort of web architecture and the new headless architecture, or an overview anywhere. And we'll go into that in more detail in a further episode. If you did like it, press that like button. But for now, just like to say goodbye and thank you for watching.